Hello, everyone. My name is Grayson Gladue, and I am joined by Kendall Chambers and Grace Miserac. Welcome to our podcast named This Mic Ain't Working. We are going to be talking about several problems that are occurring in the world, such as the drought in Kenya, urban populations growing, their impact on the environment, and also marine pollution. Now, Kendall, what can you say about the drought in Kenya? The country of Kenya is devastated because of the drought that's occurring. They need resources and they desperately need help from basically anyone who's willing and able to give it. The drought that's occurring in Kenya has led to large amounts of cattle deaths, which have resulted in less food sources and farming. And along with their cattle dying, their resources are decreasing because of this drought. Many people are beginning to starve because of this climate condition, because their cattle are dying and the vegetation is being dried out because there's no rainfall to nourish the plants that are being grown. The drought is causing a huge decrease in resources and the country is on the verge of starvation. Many people don't know what to do because they don't have any way to get water except through some troughs that are miles away, but they only have a certain amount of buckets and arms that can carry so much water. Starvation has become a possibility because of this. The drought is killing their cattle, which is leaving their community with no meat source. And they don't have much left of their plants and farms because the drought has basically dried everything up. Great job, Kendall. Now, Grace, can you inform us about the urban populations growing and what is their impact on the environment? Today's population is 7.7 billion. The net growth of 2019 so far is over 80 million people. Visualizing 7.7 billion is difficult, but seeing the impacts of billions of people have on the environment is easier. The current statistics on air pollution alone are very alarming. 92% of the world's population is breathing substandard air. And the weight of this pollution does not fall onto today, but future generations. Roughly 30 years from today, most developing countries will see two-thirds of their populations living in urban areas. And this is important or significant because urban areas on average see a higher output of pollution due to the higher number of residents per square mile. And before the 21st century had even begun, Margaret Thatcher spoke on threats to the global environment at the United Nations meeting. And according to Thatcher, the largest threat to the environment is more and more people and their activities. And during the 30 years since her speech, the world population has grown by over 2 billion people. China specifically has seen explosive economic growth from the 20th century to 2004. Their economy grew at a steady rate of roughly 9.7% annually. In perspective, this rate is roughly four times faster than the average growth of advanced economies, um, which is usually roughly 2.2. In addition, the development reduced China's poverty rate from 84.2% to 13% in less than 30 years. But this economic growth has a positive correlation to the amount of pollution being produced in China's cities due to their economies being heavily based in coal production and consumption, resulting in 27% of global coal usage being in China. Thank you for talking to us about population growth, Grace. Now I'm going to talk about my topic, which was marine pollution. Marine pollution is a growing problem in today's world. Our ocean is being flooded with two types of pollution, chemicals and trash. As you know, chemicals will include any pesticides or liquid chemicals that end up traveling into the oceans. Trash, on the other hand, is a different type of pollutant, which consists of paper, plastic, trash bags, or any other garbage that ends up into our oceans. Here are some facts about land-based pollution, which ends up in the world's oceans. 80% of marine pollution comes from land-based sources. This means that almost 80% of the pollution is all caused by humans on land. If we can come together 
as a society and try to reduce land pollution, this will, in the end, also reduce marine pollution. In many developing countries, 90% of wastewater and 70% of industrial waste is discharged without treatment. This means that the waste that is discharged into the ocean is not getting cleaned. So this is where the chemical pollution comes into play. All of these chemical contaminations or nutrient pollutions that are traveling into the ocean are coming from places such as farms and regular households that put these pollutants on their lawn or their property to help them out, which in the end only hurts the ocean due to most of that wastewater not being contaminated. Another cool fact, well not cool, but another fact is 6.5 million tons of liter of trash enter the ocean each year. 50% of that trash is plastic. The interesting thing about plastic for marine pollution is that it is very hard to break down. Plastic takes anywhere from 100 to 500 years to completely disintegrate in the ocean. As you know, you've probably seen pictures of sea turtles with their heads stuck inside of a six pack of Coca-Cola can plastic ring. These rings look like food to sea turtles, so they will often try to bite or eat these rings. More times than not, their heads or other body limbs could get stuck in the ring. This ring could be attached to any type of animal, but if a sea turtle gets a ring stuck around its neck, it has no way of getting it off. This means that the ring will be around the sea turtle for many, many years, but the sea turtle will continue to grow. This ring does not grow. That means that the ring will be tightening as the sea turtle grows, eventually having the possibility of choking the sea turtle if it is stuck around its neck. There are also more than 500 dead zones around the world's ocean. A dead zone is an area that has been so polluted that it no longer supports animal life. 500 dead zones may not seem like a lot because the world is 73% ocean, but these dead zones are rapidly growing and if humans do not change their actions or become cleaner with how they live life, the oceans are in a deep trouble. Now that you know all of our topics, we are going to conclude this episode. Stay tuned for our second episode to learn about the solutions and the effects of these three problems. Thank you for listening and have a great day.